Hi, my name is Ben Sayer. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the new Smart Stories feature in Family Tree Maker 2011. The first thing that you're going to want to do is select the subject of your Smart Story. You can do that in your pedigree chart or in the index here. I already have Echo Terry selected as my subject. Now, there are a number of ways that one can create a Smart Story. I'm just going to show you one in here and that is by using the media. So I'm going to click on the Person tab to bring up the view for Echo Terry. And down here on Media, I'll click that. And under New, I can access this drop-down box and there's this third selection here that reads Create New Smart Story. That's the one that I'm going to click on. Now it gives me the option to auto-populate that smart story or use a blank page. Since I want to show you some individual things in there, I'm going to start with a blank page. So here we have a page of the report over here on the left hand side with nothing in it. And you can see here we've got all the standard formatting controls and, and that sort of thing here. So that you can do all your editing just like in a word processor. And then over here on the right we've got three different tabs. We have this one that's selected, the facts. We have media, so we can include different images that we have in our library for that person. And we also have this timeline selection. So let me go back to facts. And within here we have a couple of drop downs. And under this one, it's currently set to personal biography. So this is the quick and dirty way to get narrative into this smart story. So this takes the facts that are present in Echo Terry's file and puts them in a narrative form. And right here you can see the preview of what information that's going to insert. You can also change to a view that shows you your different notes. So you can select one of these notes and click the insert button and it will add it. Let's just put that one in so you can see what it does. So there we go, we've got that item added. I'm going to delete it so we clean this, keep this thing clean. And we have our list of individual facts, so we can select one. And we can also select which view or which usage of it we want, a sentential form here, or whether we want uh, just the data itself or just the date or just the place. So we can select one of those and then when we click insert, it will put it in. Now I want to mention on this insert box, sometimes uh, this insert button, sometimes you see this drop down triangle and that gives you the option of whether to include a citation or not. And this setting sticks, so it doesn't matter which one of these drop downs over here you're on, it will use whatever you've been using if you don't change it. So I like including sources, so I'm going to include that citation. So now if we add this fact that we have selected in this format, I can just click insert and there we'll put it into the document. We have the fact and then the citation there. Again, I'm going to clean it up. And then the last one here is fact sources. So we can, uh, when we have one of these down here, we can select which individual source or sources we want to include. So if we want to use just one of them or exclude one, we can do that. So we'll insert just that source. Now let me go back up to personal biography because this, as I said, is the quick and dirty way to get a bunch of things in there, uh, a bunch of material with which you can work to fashion the narrative story about this individual. Now there are a couple checkboxes under here for options. You can include a title and you can include a photo automatically. So I've got those selected. You'll remember I have the citation selected there on that drop down. And so when I click insert, you'll see it build that story right over here on the left. And let me zoom in a little bit so that it's not illegible here. There we go. Should be able to see that a little bit better. So it put in the title, it put in a photograph, and, and we can resize that just like you would expect. And then here's the narrative text that it took from this box over here. And here are the citations down here at the bottom. So then you can go in here and add on to this, put whatever else you want into 
this smart story. And we also have the option, as I pointed out earlier, we have this media tab. So if I had more than one piece of media, I could select those and insert them wherever I wanted and position them within the document. And then the other thing that I want to show you here is this timeline entry. So I click this timeline uh, little mini toolbar button and that brought up this list of different events in the person's life. So one can select one or more of these things and click the insert button and it will put it in here. So you see it, it put it right where my cursor was. And that's the way that this operates. Um, you can just simply put your cursor where you want the information inserted and click insert and in, in it will put it. Now the one thing that I want to show you on this tab is you have an option to view different things in this timeline. So by default it was just the person's events but you can also select the person and their family. So this is their immediate family, birth of children and, and events in the spouse's life and things like that. Um, there's also this person and historical events, so things that were going on in the world. And then there's this last one, which is all of those things, the person, family, and historical events. So let me select that so you can see what it looks like. So it's going to take a second to build that. And then you can see here, here are all the events in that person's life, in world history, and in their family, the lives of their family members that were going on during that person's life. So you can see her birth here, and if I come down here farther, you can see the birth of her daughter, my grandmother. And you can also see here, this is the Titanic disaster. So you can select one of these or, or more than one of these. And, uh, you know, one after another to do more than one. And simply insert them. And you'll see here that down in our text here, this is where the Titanic disaster shows up. And when you select one of these items, I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but down here there's a, uh, a preview of what is going to be inserted in there for this item, so for this event. So when you select any one of these, you'll see that update. There's a civil rights movement right there. Now these add a lot of great flavor to uh, stories about people because it really gives a, a good context for the sort of things that happen during this person's life. So it's remarkable to me, um, my great-grandmother here, uh, Echo Terry, whom we knew as Peggy, uh, had a lot of things going on in, in her life, the Spanish-American War all the way through to the Apollo 11 moon landing. Uh, that's quite a lot of different, uh, elementally different things happening in a person's life. So here is the smart story. That, was, that we created for this person. Now I want to mention that you can also use documents that you have already started if you've started writing your own narratives, your own stories about people, and you have them in Word documents or text files, uh, a number of different formats. You can actually begin with those within Smart Story here. You just do File, Open, and point to whatever that is, and it will start uh, from that instead of a blank slate. Another thing I want to mention is when you have events selected in here, when any of these events change within that person's record, they'll automatically, those changes will automatically be reflected within whatever you've added to the smart story. Now what it won't do is add new facts. So if I were to go and add a new fact to Echo Terry's record, it would not by default show up in here. I would have to go in and select the fact and add it. Uh, but the things that you have already added, they will update as you um, make ch make uh, changes or discoveries. So one place where this would, would uh, likely happen is, say you, you have some location information for an event, but you only have the, the county and country, you don't have the city yet, and later on you discover that. Well, when you add that information into the record, it will automatically present itself in the smart story the next time you bring it up. So the last thing you may be wondering about with Smart Story in this overview is how do I save this thing and, and where? And so you'll notice that there's the little disk icon for saving and then like you would expect there's a file save menu and you can press Control S just like in most Windows programs. So I'm going to click Save. 
And now, depending on how you create the smart story, uh, there's, there's one way that if you create it, it will give you the option of whether you want to save the smart story as text or a media item. But since I created this as a media item, it assumes that I want to keep it that way. Now, this smart story name is what I want to call my story. It gives you a name as a suggestion, and, and I'm just going to leave it that way. And it also allows me to categorize it. I'm going to set it as a document. And then I'll click OK. And so now, you see the screen refreshed. Down here on this person record, you can see it added this entry for the story for Echo Terry. So I'm just going to close out this window. And you can see if I double click this now, when I'm looking at my media tab, then it will pull up this smart story and update the fields of information that I have there.